the dawn of man, scientists have longed to travel through time. In the late 1960s, a crack team of geniuses combined their talents to attempt to break the time barrier. In the Florida Keys, Dr. Woodstock P. Havens was given the task of building a special space shuttle. Yeah, but I decided to make a submarine instead, man. So come on and join me as we float through time. What's happening, dudes and dudettes? Stay right there, I'm coming down. One Dr. Woodstock coming down. Whoa! <laughs> dudes, time travel is such a trip, man. Ever since I installed this time travel tube, we've had people sliding in from ancient history, from the Bible, even from other planets, man. <laughs> Things have really gotten out of hand. Oh, hey, handsome. What's up? What? No, I didn't call you, man. Oh, oh, I said things got out of hand. Yeah, dude, that's just an expression. But I'm glad you're here, man. Yeah, I always feel so much better when I've got a godly friend to hold my hand. Whoa, time travel business. Make some copy, handsome. Time travel alert. Time travel alert. Get the visit, dude. Time travel visitor in three, two, one. Whoa. What is this place? Where am I? Whoa! Whoa, 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 Welcome aboard the love sub, my brother. I'm not your brother. I'm Captain Yago. Whoa, Captain Yago? Hey, dude. That's groovy. I remember your name. Yeah, Dr. Samanek said you used to come on board the, the Skylab Omega all the time. Ah, yes, this Dr. Samanek. I remember him. He's the sleepy one. I'm Captain Yago from planet Ephesus. I'm Dr. Woodstock from planet <coughs> Earth. Y yes, no food to talk of you. You're familiar with God's power. Well, I'm familiar with his power source. I'll get it out right now. Dude, dude, chill out, Ren. It's just God's word. Of of course, God's word, the Bible. I should turn to this for my answers. Well, you know what? If you got questions, God's word has the answers. Well, I'm in need of answers. I'm new to the ways of God, and our new king of a planet who put me in charge of the men does not know the God that you and I serve. Wow, dude, that sounds like you're in the same boat that Daniel was when he was the advisor to King Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, and did he tell this king to put God first? He did, man. Uh -huh. See, Daniel knew God's kingdom was greater than every other kingdom. He said, in the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. Oh! Ah! Surprise attack! Relax! That's just the warning that God told Daniel to give to the king. Oh, well, I too want to warn my king to put God first. Yeah, well, King Nebuchadnezzar got the warning, but unfortunately, he had some evil advisors. Oh, I hate evil men. Well, you know what? These advisors hated Daniel. And they hated Daniel's three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Wow, and I thought Iago was a strange name. <laughs> it is, man. Huh? 
Sorry. <laughs> but, 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 but they did have unusual names, but they loved God with all their hearts, and they would never worship any other god or idol. Of course, no man of honor would bow down to a false god. Yeah, but those evil dudes were not men of honor. So they tricked the king into making this law that said everybody had to bow down to a statue of the king whenever the music played. If I were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I would refuse to bow. Ah, <coughs> oh, fire! Get Whoa, back, you evil! Oh, ah! Look, calm down. Calm down, calm down. This is just my friend, Handsome. Thanks, Handsome. I'll take it from here. The blimp hand is your friend? No, dude, no, 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 no. He was just showing us an example. What Handsome was trying to say is, he doesn't usually carry fire, but he was showing us that the king's law said that those who did not bow down, they had to be thrown into a hot, fiery furnace. Oh, that would not feel good. Well, what did they do? They refused to bow down, man. Yes, I like these guys. They told the king that they would rescue them from the furnace, but even if he didn't, they would not serve the king's gods or worship his idol. Ha! In your face! And what the king Nebuchadnezzar say to that? He threw them into the furnace. Oh, yes, I was afraid of these. The king had the soldiers stoke up the fire as hot as it could go. But when the king looked inside, he saw four men walking around. And the fourth one looked like a son of a god. Oh my goodness, it was the Lord! The Lord was there with them! <laughs> it's true, it was the Lord. And when they came out, the fire had not harmed them or their robes. Then King Nebuchadnezzar actually praised our God for rescuing them. He respected the choice they had made. Check it out. They trusted in him and defied the king's commands and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Wow. What is this, this? Those are the choice lights, man. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego made the right choice to stand together and trust the one true God. And God was there with them in the flames. That's right. It's like Jesus said, where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Ah, the Lord always promises to be there with us, and God always keeps his promises. That's right, dude. Why don't we search for uh. his promise? No, put it away, dude. We're just going to search for his promise right now. Oh. Get out your periscope like oh. you're looking underwater. Uh, uh, like this? You got it. You're really good at this. Here comes the promise. There it is, Yago. Go ahead and read it. Oh, me? Okay. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom. His dominion endures from generation to generation. God's kingdom will last forever. Now that's a promise. I too will tell my new king that God's kingdom must come first. Dude, that king is lucky to have a godly friend like you. <laughs> I am lucky to have met a godly friend like you. <laughs> and like you too, handsome, for you both have taught me that when friends unite, God is there with us. Uh, may I call you my friends? Sure, dude! <laughs> and we can pray together that God will change the heart of your king, just like he did for Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, kids, until next time, we're going to go pray. But remember, no matter where you are in time, God is good all the time. Oh, I like Peace. this. Come on, Yago, let's go catch up with Hanson. Okay, I'll see you later.